So before I jump into the demo, probably I'll give you a, a explanation on the topology that I have in my lab. Okay. So as you can see, there is a management network over here. That's where my jump holes, my vCenter, my NSX manager, my RV controllers are. Okay. Oh yeah, one thing. Um, you know, you, you can use RV together with NSX, or you can actually use it as a standalone. Right. We support RV uh, on a standalone as well, which means you do not need NSX for RV. Just one, just, just highlight over here. Uh, then it was routed to the physical network. And I just one network for the TKG. I'm using a Tanzu setup for my demo. Okay. And th they are on this uh, TKG workload, just one subnet. Um, and then my service engine as well as, um, as my worker nodes, they are all on the same network. Okay. I have two clusters set up just to simulate. For example, I have two clusters over here. Of course, in your in your production and real life environment, you probably have different subnets that is being located at both sides. However, that I mean that will not change uh, the solution. The solution will still work for a multiple sub, uh, subnets um, environment. Okay, so I'm going to be like a DevOps uh, engineer. I'm calling myself. I'm Vincent. I'm the DevOps engineer. I'm going to deploy some apps over here, and I'm going to you know cater for different. Uh, scalability requirements in like what you have in your production environment. Okay, so I'm going to log in to the RV platform, right? So I have my own account, right, Vincent. And when I log in, uh, so this is like you know, you get access to the applications that um, my colleagues or myself actually uses. Okay, so for example, I can take a look at um, this ingress service over here. So I can maybe, yeah, maybe I can show you a little bit on the dashboard first. So you go over here, you get to see the service, right? And you get to see the containers that's over here. Okay. And you can see that it's being load balanced by this two uh, service engine over here. So you want to take a look at the virtual service. Okay. Then we can go in over here click on the virtual service, okay, you get to see, first you get to see the analytics, okay, you get to see all the latency and things like that. So this really, this this UI over here is really nice, right? You get to see the, the user, right? maybe I'll expand a little bit so that it's nicer. So you get to see the users, the client assessing the load balancer and uh, the latency that it takes as well as, you know, from the load balancer assessing the application, how long it actually takes. So it give you this end-to-end -end path on uh, the latency. So this really helps and give you on uh, just one view, you know, end-to-end -end from your users to your your servers, right? What is the total latency that actually they take? Right? So from here, you can know that, okay, where is actually, you know, if your application is slow, you will actually know uh, where, is the, where is the point that is causing uh, the latency. Then, of course, you have the logs. You get to see... Um, different logs over here right you can over, you can see over here um, i can click on one of the logs you can actually see a lot of details from here right where the users are coming from and where you're trying to access to right and from which time and times like this and of course there's the other things that you can take a look like the health and you know you know what are the certificates that's actually being used and some of the alerts and events. So you can see that it gives you a lot of information from the UX perspective, right? So if you want to zoom down into certain events, you can actually use the search, right? And you just click and say, okay, application times more than or less than things like this. And it will show you the logs accordingly to uh, whatever your search field are, okay? So I have this application actually deployed. Um, I can actually show you uh, the, the environment that is on okay so uh, this is my my console my CLI okay um, and I will show you the this hello.ako facebook.com okay and I'll get all in the namespace hello so you can see that I have three ports running right and you know I have the servers I have the deployment and uh, show you the ingress Right, so this is the ingress that I have over here. Okay. So if you go to the dashboard, it will be a clearer view, right? So you can use the tree view or you can use the least view, right? So I, I personally like the tree view. 
you can actually go in here and take a look right so it shows you this chart over here so this is what we have okay and i will try to access it um, so with it you need actually a dns resolution right so uh, from here you can see over here this this is the fqdn that you use okay and this is on the vip which is this address over here okay uh, from here you actually there is a dns server that's registered this uh, fqdn to this vip and this is actually hosted on this dns right if you click on here you get to see the the ip address which is 110.115.1.169 so that's what exactly i want to do i want to do a continuous loop doing a lookup right so um so what i will do here is do a dig uh and it will go you will try to resolve this hello.ako.aspot.com on this dns server which is on this ip address just show you over here and it will just continue the um do the dns request so as you can see is giving you this vip that you see over here in your ingress specification okay so i have another console i just um i'm just going to do a okay let me lock on do a jump host i'm going to do a call okay and you know on this as a uh, url and you can do a call it give you a response and and it responds with one of the telling you that which which container you are actually assessing to right so you can see over here is the 85 uh, tvg so this is the one this is the exact container that is trying to assess to so all this application right now is actually hosting um in one in one tkg clusters okay so maybe i can share you with you the diagram it'll be easier so what i'm showing here is the hello application that's hosted over here so there's a dns that's hosted here and there's an ingress controller that's doing all this so that's good and then you know my boss tells me that hey vincent i think you know we need to cater for high availability for our production environment so that's what i'm going to do i have another clusters with the tkg workload domain one and what i'm going to do is deploy the same application on workload domain one so i really have prepared the manifest over here and oh by the way i also need to secure it with um, trs okay so i have prepared a manifest over here which is the the same manifest that i'm going to use for what i have deployed in cluster two so i have the manifest it's called the hello kubernetes so i'm going to just show you what it comprises of okay so this this is the service okay we're going to configure a service okay with a cluster ip and then after that we're going to configure a deployment with three replicas okay using this image and we're going to create an ingress okay and this ingress is a secured uh, ingress because we are using a trs certification and we make use of the secrets over here so i already have, have uh, put in the secret so i can actually get the secrets so you can see that i already have this hello T ingress secrets so i'm going to do it on the first clusters so i make sure that i'm i'm on this T first clusters over here okay and i'm going to just do the same So we can uh, get all the namespace. Okay, so you can see that it's deploying right now. Okay, and we have the ingress. Let me get the ingress. Oh, sorry. We have the ingress being configured, right? So you can see uh, the VIP is over here, okay? And this is the FQDN, right? It is the with the secrets. And yeah, you can configure it. Uh, there's three ports running, right? Which is over here. So on the dashboard, you know, you grabs it. This is the one that we just configured. It has three containers over here, okay? And you can see on the DNS side, right? I'm, I'm resolving the dns okay as you can see now it added the vip into the dns itself okay so i can actually assess the application right now 
you can see over here, right? So this this is the container that it goes to, which is um, right, right in here. Right? It's just nice that it does the DNS resolution and it goes to the first uh, TKG clusters and that's where it, call, it goes to the container over here. So this is all good. And so right now we have we have these two applications over here being load balanced uh, on both sides, right? And you can see over here. So, um, you know, I also have an application over here to show you, um, you know, more for, from more visual perspective, I have a client that's trying to access this. So I'm going to start the test over here. And you can see that, you know, from a user perspective, that's where it goes, right? It goes, you know, blue, blue is actually meaning for the first cluster, the green is actually for the second clusters, right? So it's actually going, it's uh, round robin, load balancer, uh, load balance in a round robin fashion. So now it's all good. And the thing here is, you know, maybe there's a, there's an increase in demand and say, my boss came in and say, hey, Vincent, um, you know, I need more containers to spin up. Okay? And I happen to have some resources available in, in a KTKG cluster one. And I'm going to do a scale out on my containers. Okay. So I'm going to scale out my deployment. Okay. I'm going to scale out my deployments, hello Kubernetes. Okay. With a replica of six. So I'm going to scale out my uh, my ports in my first clusters. Okay, and let me get all. So you can see that now I have six containers uh, running over here. So you can see the dashboard also updated it, right? Uh, but however, it's you know nothing changed to the to the dns records over here right? it's still you can see that it's still being round robin into this two virtual ip address uh which is what not it's not exactly what we want right uh we want to also bring in the users more users to the first cluster because it has more uh ports that's able to serve them more servers to able to serve them uh then again right if if you only do it for the containers right the infrastructure might be the bottleneck so so that's where the elasticity of uh you know the rv solution actually comes in so when we want to scale out the application we also want to go in and scale up the infrastructure as well so let's say for example there's only you know if i take a look at my hello application you can see that there's only one service engine that is serving it so what i could do is you know to make sure that i have enough service engine i want to scale out uh, to more service engine. So this could this could comprises of you know like you know this is a scale out right so this is one this is the this is the virtual service is coming on this service engine I could actually scale it out. So I have option over here since I have uh, additional service engine I can actually go in and scale that to service engine um, or in fact if I just want to create more service engine i can also create new service engine i can also do that so once i do that i click on scale out okay so what rv controller will do it will it will call the vcenter right to deploy a new service engine right you can see that over here is trying to deploy a service engine right now so now my infrastructure my load balancer fabric has expanded right just like how i expanded the uh, the applications, I scale the applications, more, con more containers, more ports. Now I my infrastructure scale accordingly as well. So now how do I actually bring, you know, users to my, more users to my cluster, right? So you can see from here is still on a 50-50% basis. And um, the reason for that is because, uh, you know, we are doing a round robin fashion and it's going into, if you click on this FQDN, right, I will show you over here under the GSLV pool, you can see the ratio is a one is to one. Okay. Of course, we can change the settings over here, but what I'm going to show you the capability of, you know, everything uh, a more automated way, right, so we can actually use the API to change all this. So, I have prepared a, a host rule. Right, I can actually show you the host rule over here. And the host rule actually changes the weightage of this FQDN 
uh, to have more weightage on the TKG cluster. Okay, so you can see that here, right, the DNS query is still uh, doing a round robin fashion, right? So what I'm going to do is to apply this uh, uh, host rule over here. So once you apply this host rule, yeah, you should be able to see that right now it's you know more more users is going to go to the uh, the blue side, right? Because I have given a higher weightage to there. So if you if you see over here, um, you'll see that it actually responded with more, um, you know, than 115.157, right? That's the VIP of the first clusters over here. So you can take a look. So I'm going to describe the ingress again. Right, so you can see the VIP, right, which is 10.1157, right? So that's the first one. So if you go in from the controller perspective go into the pool you can see that now right so this is the this is the TKG cluster number two this is the TKG cluster number one you can see that the ratio now is four so now I have successfully steal more traffic to the first clusters So I have come to the end of my demo. So as you can see that, um, you know, I can, you know, quickly deploy the applications uh, very quickly and you get the, the DevOps uh, engineer can get to see the view from the UI. And, you know, I also have successfully scale out my infrastructure according to my applications requirements, right? If they scale out, I, mean, I can do scale in as well. And you see how I actually can uh, use the GSLB service uh, the DNS in an automated fashion, right? Uh, all through API calls uh, from the control from the developer's point of view, and yeah, we get to steer the traffic to according to what you what you need, right? If you need more users to be go to a particular site, or whether it's in a HA environment or a multi-site active active clusters environment, you can do all these different kind of scenarios that you wish to do. So, thanks for watching the demo.